Hello and welcome into the Arkham Art Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen. This is Racing News Now. And today we're going to talk about the Arkham Art Series East first stop to Southern National Motorsports Park. The Southern National 200 presented by Solid Rock Carriers. 200 laps around the 4 10th mile oval in Kenley, North Carolina. And before we get started, if you are new here, we currently are in our hashtag race to 1K. So if you haven't, consider going down below to hit that subscribe button. It is free to do. The quicker we get to a thousand subscribers, the quicker YouTube will let us do mobile live streaming, which will greatly improve both the quality and quantity of coverage we're able to give you from the track. We will be back at the track at either Elko or Berlin here in July. Not 100% sure if we'll be at Elko just yet, but we definitely will be at Berlin. And then we'll be at pretty much every ARCA race for the rest of the season after that. So the quicker we hit that thousand subscriber mark, the quicker you get more and better coverage from these ARCA races from RNN. So it's quick, it's easy to do, just a click, quick click on that subscribe button and that's all you gotta do. And the quicker we get to a thousand, the quicker you get mobile live streams from the track. It's as simple as that. I'm gonna be honest, this was a good race. This was a good race. We had solid short track racing. We had beaten and banging. We had close quarters racing. We had tight racing throughout the field all night. We had a driver that looked like they were going to run away with it. And then that changed drastically throughout the middle portions of the race. So it wasn't just one driver running away with it. Like we've had in a lot of ARCA races this year at, at all levels of ARCA. We had some parody in this race, we had some excitement, we had some drama. This race had a lot of things going for it, and for a first stop to Southern National, knocked it out of the park. I give I give Southern National an A-plus on this. I don't know how much Southern National, the track, had to do with it as much as it was just the racing itself, but I'm going to give credit to Southern National and say that this was great and that we need to go back to Southern National in the future because this was fantastic. I know a lot of people probably didn't see this race because it, it ended up running at the exact same time as the SRX race, which I think had more hype around it than an ARCA East race, but couple that with the fact that it was on track pass and not many people have track pass, but either way, this was a great race. And I think it was it was well worth watching if you did see it. And you definitely got your money's worth if you did see it. This race, I think, was the epitome of what I have been preaching, that you don't need a full field of cars to have a really good race. We had 16 cars in this race. And realistically, there was really only like 11 cars in this race. Because after about lap 40, you had all the starting parks already parked up in the garage, and there was really about 11 cars in the race after lap 40. But that's fine, because we had a really good race with those 11 cars. Would I like to have a full field of 40 cars every week? Yes, I'm not saying there shouldn't be 40 cars in the field, but that shouldn't be the main priority. We shouldn't be saying, oh, we need more cars in the field just for the sake of having a bigger field if it's not going to help the racing. We need more racing like this, then we can figure out how to get more cars in the field. Because this should be the important thing, is to have races like this. This race should be the poster child of, this is what these ARCA races should look like, we need the competitiveness like this, then we can worry about getting more cars in the field and bolstering the field that way. Because when the racing looks like this, it doesn't matter if you've got five cars in the race or 40 cars in the race, it's gonna be a good race. That's my biggest takeaway from this race is the exact thing that I've been preaching. Doesn't matter the overall field size in the race, it matters the competitive cars in the race. And we had a lot of competitive cars in this race. Now, there was really only a couple cars I think that probably had race winning speed, but the fact that there was more than one car that had race winning speed was enough to make the race for the win exciting. And then we had really good battles throughout the field behind that. The mid pack was very competitive in this race. And I think this race, again, should be the poster child and should be held up and go, this is what we should be striving for in ARCA right now. Not to get 40 cars in the field just for the sake of having 40 cars, 
We need racing like this. This is what is going to draw the eyeballs back to Arca and bring Arca back into more prominence and make it a little less of, let's be honest, uh, the, the joke that a lot of people have made it within the past few years. So let's look at your cautions for the day in the Southern National 200. Only three cautions in this race, of course, two of them are the scheduled breaks at lap 76 and 126. Only one caution for an incident at lap 53 as Ross Dalton spun in turn four. He was driving the eight car today for Empire Racing. That is a team that we have not seen much of in recent years, so it's good to see them back on the track. So now, with the cautions out of the way, let's take a look at your lap leaders for the day. We had two drivers spending time out front in this race. Mason Diaz actually led the most laps in this race with 132 laps spent out front of the field and Sammy Smith spent 68 laps out front. Now, with Mason Diaz leading the most laps, did Mason Diaz finally break through and pick up his first career Arkham Menard Series East victory after so much hardship and so much trying to finally get into victory lane. He's been close a lot of times this season, but that 18 of Sammy Smith has just been too strong in pretty much every race up until this point. Did Mason Diaz finally break through with those most laps led, or did Sammy Smith lead at the end of the race when it mattered? And the answer to that question is Mason Diaz led the first 132 laps of this race. Sammy Smith, I don't know what adjustment they made on that final pit stop at the break at lap 126, but that car came to life over the last 75 laps. Sammy Smith was not a race winning car today. Third in practice, so fairly speedy, but not quite as fast as what we're used to seeing out of him. And then he qualified sixth, drove his way up to second through the early portions of the race, but Mason Diaz had him covered through those first two stints of the race up until the final break at lap 126 and was still running faster lap times up until there was about two to go there before that final break where I noticed Mason Diaz kind of starting to fall off and Sammy Smith may have been starting to get quicker than him right before that final break. And I started to wonder if that might not make a difference as we got into the final portion of the race. I don't know if... Mason Diaz's car was just fading as we got later into the race, or if that 18 team led by crew chief Mark McFarlane made a great adjustment on that final pit stop, and that's what propelled Sammy Smith to victory lane in this one, his third win of the season in five races, and the fourth time in five races that the 18 car has gone to victory lane in the Arkham Menard Series East. Remember, Ty Gibbs won the Dover race, which was an East race, a few weeks ago in the Arkham Menard Series East. So that 18 car is on a roll right now. They've won nine out of the last 10 races in the main Arca Series and Arkham Menard Series East. That team is on such a roll right now. It is incredible to watch what they are doing. And what's even more incredible, if you look at this results page, Sammy Smith lapped up through third place by the end of this race. And at the rate he was going, give him another 20, 30 laps. I'll bet you he'd have lapped Joey East too. Cause Joey East was back to what? 6.7 seconds behind was the official margin of victory between Sammy Smith and Joey East. Lap times about 15, 16 seconds a lap. So at the rate that Sammy was, was gapping Joey at the end of this race, maybe not 20, 30 laps. I bet you give him another 50 laps at most. Sammy Smith would have lapped the entire field in this race. Joey East by the end of this race was the only one really even in the same zip code as Sammy Smith and what's even more incredible like this Sammy turned on the afterburners in that final run Mason Diaz restarted from the lead after that final break caution it was about lap 130 or so when we went back green from that with about 70 laps to go it took Sammy a couple laps to get around Mason Diaz when he finally did he took off we're talking less than 70 laps and he lapped up through third incredible 
incredible. I know it's a four tenths of a mile track, so it's not a huge track, but at the same time, the speed it takes to be able to do that and lap almost the entire field in less than 70 laps, that's incredible speed. I, I just, I don't even know how to fathom how much faster Sammy Smith was at the end of this race than really the rest of the field. And, it, and what's incredible is, like we talked about a minute ago, he didn't have that kind of speed most of the day. I'll be interested to see when we talk to him here in a couple of days about this win, what exactly they did on that final pit stop to make him so much faster than the rest of the field. Because again, up until like lap 125, whenever that last break was, he didn't have that kind of speed. He wasn't fast. I mean, he was fast. At the very least, was a second place car in this race up to that point. And then all of a sudden, that final pit stop comes and he is gone, literally gone. No one even had a chance at that point. So it'll be interesting to see once we talk to him. We'll definitely chat about that and, and try to find out really what happened there at the end of the race, why all of a sudden he had that kind of speed when he really hadn't shown that kind of speed all throughout the rest of the day. It'll be interesting to talk to him about that here in a couple of days when we have that. Joey East again, though, came home in second, a career best finish for him. Great run for Joey East. I, I have to figure, well, I was gonna say I have to to figure he's going to get a win by the end of the season running like that. But there's two factors that are really probably going to hinder that. Factor number one is Sammy Smith. I don't think Sammy Smith is likely to slow down enough to allow that before the end of the season. And the other factor is the other three races on the East schedule this year are combo races with the main Arkham and Art series. So Sammy Smith isn't going to be your only big competition in those races. You're going to have Ty Gibbs. You're going to have Corey Heim. You're going to have Drew Dollar. You're going to have Gracie Trotter. Who Whoever, whoever ends up being in the Venturini cars for those races. You're going to have Brett Holmes or Sam Mayer, depending on who's in the, the 23 car for that race. You're going to have some fairly big names in those races on top of Sammy Smith. So, unfortunately, I don't know that circumstances are going to go Joey's way to get a win for the end of the season at this rate, but things are looking promising for him, and he is definitely on an upward trajectory right now, and things are looking very promising for the rest of the season in 2022 for Joey East going forward. Forward. Raja Karuth came home in the third position in this race. Career best finish for him, beating the fourth place finish he got at Pensacola earlier this season. So another one that's on an upward trajectory right now is Raja Karuth. Definitely a great run for him tonight. And again, another one that unfortunately, given that the last three races are combo races, I don't think he's going to be able to break through and get that first win by the end of the season. But he is definitely looking stout right now and showing that he should be here and that he's going to be competitive going forward. I see some really good things happening for Raj going forward. Another strong run for Parker Retzloff in the fourth position. Great run for him. I believe he was as high as third on the night. Had some pretty sporty speed on the night. I don't think that he was really fast enough to, to run with Sammy Smith clearly as he got lapped by the end of the race but definitely definitely a good night for Parker Retzloff and he is definitely looking better and better each race. Big shout out to Justin Carroll in fifth. Fantastic run for him tonight his first career top five in an ARCA East race. First time back in an ARCA East race. Now, after really being an ARCA East mainly competitor up until this year, he spent a lot of time in the Arkham Menard series this year. I gotta figure the higher competition level in the Arkham Menard series helped him now that he has come back to ARCA East. And I feel like that may be a reason why we're seeing this even better result out of him than we've ever seen. And I see good things happening for Justin Carroll going forward. He's been one that I've really been looking at here for the past year or so as somebody that I think gets overlooked a lot and I think is somebody that really has a lot of talent. Hopefully he has been proving that and can pick up a ride with one of these bigger teams here soon because he is just in a family-owned car right now in that 91 car. So it would be nice to see him get picked up by one of these bigger teams now that he's really starting to prove that he's got some talent. And I think he could do some really good things with one of these bigger teams. Hopefully he has impressed someone enough up to this point that maybe that will happen. Rest your top 10, Daniel Dye making his debut in the GMS 21 car, came home in the sixth position. I know probably not as good as they would like to have been on the night, but definitely showed some speed as high as, did he get up to second at one point? I know he was at least at third. He might have been up to second at one point, but definitely had some speed in this race, but really everybody in there from second down to like eighth or ninth really were really competitive with each other in this race. And for the longest point in this race, Mason Diaz was head and shoulders above the rest of them, but really it was still like second, eighth or ninth that was really close. And then it flip-flopped at the end of the race. Sammy Smith ran away, made 
Chase and Diaz fell back into that battle, but for the entire race, that whole like second and ninth group was extremely competitive. So nothing to hang your head over by finishing sixth, as as this whole group right here was very close and swapped positions up and down a lot in this race. Speaking of Mason Diaz, talk about a fall from grace. Led 132 laps in this race, lost the lead with about 70 laps to go, and fell all the way to seventh by the end of this race. I don't know what happened at the end of the race for that 74 car, but clearly not the result that they were looking for after leading so many laps in this race, looking like they were the car to beat for so long today, and then it all just fell apart by the end of the race. I hate to see that, as that was, for the longest time, it looked like it was going to be quite possibly the best day of Mason Diaz's career up to this point, because it really looked like he was about to get his first win, and then it all started to unravel with about 70 to go, and landed in the seventh spot. It's unfortunate because he's really shown this year in that 74 car, he's got a lot of talent and he deserves a good ride and unfortunately just hasn't had the results to show for it and it's really disappointing. The return of Mason Mingus this week in the 11 for Fast Track came home in the 8th position, started on the outside pole and unfortunately never really showed the speed that he did in Nashville. Kind of fell back fairly quickly at the beginning of the race and just kind of hung out in the back half of the top 10 most of the rest of the day. Davey Callahan in the three car for Big Willie Mullins this week. Brought it home in the ninth position. Great run out of Davey. He was in the top five at different points in this race, really giving that car a good run. So shout out to him. Great day for Davey Callahan. Max Gutierrez, your new Smyrna winner, rounds out the top 10 in 10th. Final page 11 through 16. Ross Dalton in the eighth for Empire Racing landed in the 11th position. Then you see the remainder of the field. Morgan Alexander, Stephanie Moyer, Owen Smith, Brad Smith, and Wayne Peterson. So that's your results from the Southern National 200. Already in talks with Sammy Smith about getting that chat with him at some point this week. He's got a busy week coming up this week, so I'm not sure exactly when we're going to fit into his schedule. We will see when that happens. I'm going to guess it won't be before like Monday or Tuesday, but not 100% sure when. So make sure you are subscribed and you got your notifications turned on. That way you know exactly when we chat with him and we're definitely going to find out where all that speed came from in those final 70 laps or so because it was incredible the speed that that 18 car had at the end of this race. All right, so let's take a look at your points. Five races into the Arkham Menard Series East schedule for 2021. Three races remaining, all combo races with the main Arkham Menard Series. So we are through all of the standalone races for the Arkham Menard Series East this season, and Sammy Smith, head and shoulders, has been the dominant driver for the first five races this season, winning three of those five and finishing top 10 in every other one of the, in fact, finishing top five in the other two races. 30 points now is the lead for Sammy Smith over Mason Diaz, and unless something catastrophic happens at Iowa, Milwaukee, or Bristol, final three races, the combo races with the Arkham Menard Series, Sammy Smith is on his way to a 2021 Arkham Menard Series East Championship. There is no way around it at this point unless something crazy happens in these final races. He's just head and shoulders been ahead of everybody else for these first five races. There's no way around it. He 100% has been. So fantastic first five races. Obviously, this is why we run the races. You can't give him the championship yet because you don't know what's going to happen in those final three races. He could just have the worst luck ever in those three races and, and lose the championship. Championship, but if he continues to do what he's done through these first five races, ain't no way he's losing this championship at this point. Mason Diaz, though, in second right now, minus 30. Pretty good battle here for that second position with Joey East and Max Gutierrez. Only seven points separating them from Mason Diaz. And you got a pretty good battle for fifth down here. Parker Retzliff, Raja Karuth, only one point apart from each other. Daniel Dye, though, after having a bit of a slow start to the season, he is 93 points off of the lead, so he's got about 45 points roughly to get up to that battle with Parker Retzliff and Raja Karuth for that fifth spot. That's a lot of points to make up in three races. It can be done, but Daniel Dye kind of there in his own little bubble right now in seventh. Mason Mingus, two starts on the season, and he's already eighth in points. So really good runs out of Mason Mingus so far in those couple of starts of the season. Don't know if we'll see him again for the rest of the season, but either way, two starts, and he's already up to eighth in points. So kudos to Mason Mingus. There. And then Dick Doney and Stephanie Moyer also in the top 10. 
The fetch point standings following the Southern National 200 from Southern National Motorsports Park. Five races down, three races remain for the Arkham Menard Series East in 2021. I believe that will do it for us. On this Arkham Menard Series Rewind show, got a special video coming up for you here in the next couple of days, probably Monday. Not going to promise that, but it'll probably be out on Monday for you. Give the Rewind show a couple days to breathe here and give people a chance to see that. And then probably will be out on Monday. Not going to spoil what it is, but I think you're going to like it. It is Arca related. Uh, and then, of course, Sammy Smith interview coming up. Hopefully should be the first couple days of the week. Again, not sure when that's going to be, but we will definitely um, have him on here early in the week. iRacing Tuesday on Tuesday as well. Should have a driver this week. Can't tell you who it is just yet, but it is somebody you will like. I can guarantee that. So, got a lot of stuff coming up for you this week, heading into an off week for ARCA next weekend. Might have an SRX watch party on Saturday. I'm not 100% sure, but we might do one for Knoxville since we don't have an ARCA race this week. Can't promise that just yet, but might. Keep an eye out for that, as that might be something fun to do to hang out on Saturday night and watch the SRX race. But otherwise... We'll be back with ARCA action the following weekend for the main ARCA Menard Series at Pocono. And then we really get into the summer stretch with the main ARCA Menard Series and ARCA Menard Series West pretty much simultaneously every weekend for a while now. And a lot of weekends sharing both ARCA and ARCA West. So we got a lot of races coming up for you here soon after this off weekend. So definitely stay tuned for all of that. But as always, we want to thank our Patreon supporter, Regional Manager William Holmes. Thank you, as always, for your support. It's always greatly appreciated. But if you would like to be a patron of RNN, the link is down below in the description. Patreon.com slash Racing News Now. Not required by any means, but it is really appreciated when you want to support RNN in that way. But that is going to do it for this one. So at that, this has been the Arkham Menard Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.